whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. And men are flesh and blood, and apprehensive, yet the number I do know but one, the unassailable holds on his rank, unshaken emotion, in that I am him. Et tu, Brute? Here comes Antony. Welcome, Mark Antony. O oh, mighty Caesar, thou dost lie so low. All of your glories, triumphs, and spoils shrunk to this little measure. Fare thee well. I know not, Brutus, what you intend, but if you bear me hard, I shall not find myself so apt a place will please me so, no means of death, as here by Caesar. Antony, beg not your death of me, though now I must appear bloody and cruel, and my hands called by the blood of Caesar. You see not my heart, it is pitiful. It pities the wrong of Rome, and such pity hath done this wrong on Caesar. As for you, Mark Antony, my arms and swords and tempers do receive you in, with kind love, good thoughts, and reverence. Good Brutus, the merest that I shall ask of thee, is that I may produce his body to the marketplace, and in the pulpit, as nothing more than a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. Then here, take you Caesar's body. You shall not, in your funeral speech, do anything. Speak you all good you can devise of Caesar, but also that you only do so by my permission. You will speak after my speech hath ended, else you shall have no hand about his funeral. I do desire no more. Then prepare the body. Follow me. Oh, pardon me, you bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with this butcher. Look the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in this tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds do I prophesy. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use. With Caesar's spirit ranging for revenge, shall in these confines with the monarch's voice cry havoc and slip the dogs of war. Mm -hmm.